So this is Vinnie Moore, one of my favorite players from the 80s, and one of the first players to gain prominence in the post Ingve world for having great picking technique. Now, of course, there were many players before Ingve who had great picking technique, Al Demiola, John McLaughlin, both of whom we're going to look at in just a second. But after Ingve, especially in rock, everything kind of became neoclassical and everyone got lumped in with this sort of wave of, of Baroque musical inspiration that was sweeping heavy metal. And so Vinny was a part of that. But really, Vinny's coolest stuff, I think, to me, really leaned more towards Prague, not the city, but the, the musical style. And his picking technique was, of course, nothing like Ingve's, and it was, in fact, very much like Mike's. The first time I ever heard Vinny play, I didn't even realize I was hearing Vinny play. And if you're old enough, you may know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, great! You just got an opener. Opener? No opener? Who needs an opener? Let JJ do it. There's one soft drink with a taste so electrifying, it's pure rock and roll. So at your 80s loft party, if you don't have a bottle opener, you can apparently use riffs. But what if one Pepsi bottle refuses to open? And now you know, descending sixes will open up all your soft drinks. And it'll also rattle off all the chicken head knobs right off your amplifier. So use with caution. Drink responsibly. <laughs> um, now, it's, of course, what is the connection with Vinnie Moore here? Vinnie played the licks in the commercial, and those hand close ups were actually Vinnie's hands. Of course, they didn't have the right mullet available, so they had to hire out a guy to do Vinnie's acting. But the sound was really phenomenal. It's a really awesome killer lick. And it turns out that in Vinny's next instructional video, his second instructional video, he actually shows us how he plays the Pepsi lick. I played on a Pepsi commercial a few years ago, and I used one of these uh, very licks that I just showed you. So I'll show you what I'm doing here just as an example. <laughs> Phenomenally well played, right? It's descending sixes. We know this pattern now. We've seen it several different times. Starting on a downstroke, he's doing it here in A minor, and he's repeating each group of sixes twice. Now, Vinny actually shows us how he does the Pepsi lick, but look at how different it looks when he does this. Here that is, slow down. Totally different. Hand position is different. It's wrist action. It's none of this sort of trademark Vinny Moore elbow thing going on. Even the position of the thumb uh, is different. It's much more relaxed and loose. Vinny's high speed form is very distinctive, just as distinctive as Mike's is, but in a totally different way. So the slow version of the lick isn't really helping us understand how the fast version of the lick is played. What we really need to do is slow down the high speed version. Okay, so this here, this is the distinctive Vinny Moore hand position, and it's a hand position common to many primary upward pick slanters like Vinny. The bent thumb, you can see that, that's a signifier of upward pick slanting. It can mean a lot of things. It can mean uh, control of edge picking so that you can attack the string with the edge of the pick. In Vinny's case, it means both. By rotating his hand to upward pick slanting, it changes the attack of the pick against the string. So to correct that, he needs the thumb bump to get the right amount of edge on the string. So whenever Vinny locks into his high speed mode, you'll see the thumb bump instantly appear. 
and his hand gets very rigid because it's really an elbow mechanic that he's using here. The motion mechanic is elbow. But what's really important in terms of what enables this lick to be played like this at this kind of speed with this kind of fluidity and precision is of course the pick slanting mechanics. And what's happening here is descending sixes starting on a downstroke. And it's gonna work just the same way as we've seen it so far. Down, up, down on the first string, up, down, rotate on the sixth note. So let's take a look at that six note sequence because it's the same six note sequence that we see in Mike's playing. Here's the first three notes, down, up, down on the first string. When you go to the second string, it's gonna be up, down, rotate. And now the rotational movements here, this is really amazing how small and precise they are. At some point between the fifth and the sixth notes, you'll watch Vinny's hand just click, one little click of the dial this way. That's all the downward pick slanting he needs. And remember when I was saying that primary up pick slanters have relatively imperceptible movements compared to primary down pick slanters where the movements are more visible because of the bend in the wrist. When, you, when your hand is up here and you click into downward pick slanting, you can make those movements really small as Vinny is doing here. He's using really the tiniest amount of pick slanting to make that sixth note become downward pick slanting so that he can get back to the beginning of the lick. In fact, as an experiment, what I did is I tried to play descending sixes starting on a downstroke using the smallest possible pick slant that I could use just to see how invisible I could make these movements. If you were standing right in front of me and watching this, could I get it to be completely invisible? And this is what happened. We can see it sort of happening here, but if we go back to the fast version of the lick for a second. You're just never gonna see that. It, this is such a classic example of what little hope we had as kids watching this stuff and trying to figure out these movements when the players themselves were so obviously unaware that they were even doing this. And yet, I'm not knocking these instructional videos. I think they are incredibly important documents of some of the greatest techniques in history. We just need to do a little bit more Rosetta Stone style decoding on them to understand what's going on. This technique is a, or this tape, Vinny's instructional tapes, both of them are incredible troves of, uh, of flawless mechanics and fantastic playing. The bent note at the end, that just incredible wailing banshee scream, so fabulously played. We know it's just a pattern that you've heard a million times before. I've played it, we've all played it, but there's so much personality in this. It really points up the fact that the character is what makes the playing interesting. The patterns themselves are kind of incidental.